Hi, uh, Martin W. Francis. This month I wanted to talk to you about composition and in particular balance in composition. Now at the moment Jocelyn has me set up for symmetrical balance so you can see I'm in the, the center of the frame. There is information on the left and there's information on the right but neither of which are competing with each other or myself. Now symmetrical balance can be used for portraiture but it doesn't have to be uh, people. It can also be things like buildings, it can be trees, it can be a phone box. Whatever takes your fancy, it doesn't matter. However, if it is people, one thing you may consider is that a low viewpoint can change the way the audience relates to your image. So all of a sudden, I'm quite now grand and uh, giant-like almost, and uh, it reminds me of uh, posters uh, that uh, we used to have post-war for Russia and China, where they were promoting their Communist Party, uh, making them seem important and elite. Things don't have to be like that though, if we take a higher viewpoint, all of a sudden the, your audience has an intimate relationship with your subject in that it's calming, it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot closer and uh, intimate uh, in, in that connection. And I can show you some examples of that later with an amazing artist that I take a lot of interest in, uh, Aminio Modigliani. Uh, if we now move to asymmetrical balance though, uh, Jocelyn, can you just put me on the golden mean, please? Uh, all of a sudden you can see things have changed quite dramatically in that I have a, a lot of space over here and less space over there. The same thing still applies in that you need the elements to balance but not compete with the subject. With this you can still, you can still play though. So for example, if I turn to the left, and look out to the frame, um, you tend to kind of create a kind of a tension within the picture plane. And this is something that you can use uh, if that's what you want to get over to your, uh, to your audience. Turning it the other way, of course, though, all of a sudden the tension goes and uh, we're looking out towards the space and everything is calm again and in balance. I'll be showing you some practical examples of this later in the video. For now, that's it. In this first example, um, you're looking at a painting from Arminio Modigliani. It was called The Cellist and it was painted in 1909 in oils. So it's a symmetrical uh, composition. Uh, you'll notice if you take a line from the head of the cellist down to his right arm and then across to the other end of the cello, uh, it forms a triangle. This is a very common structural uh, way of presenting uh, religious art of the Renaissance and uh, the artist has used it again. There is uh, objects left and right of the uh, subject. Uh, they form horizontal and vertical lines which are used for framing. However, neither of which have any more weight or visual weight than the main subject. So what you end up with is a harmonious image that's in balance and uh, beautifully structured. Modigliani was quite well known for his use of curvilinear line and if you start at the top of the picture where the frame is in the middle you can follow a line straight down through the cellist's head down through his arm all the way down to the hands which I think is where the artist probably wanted you to end up looking. In this second painting, uh, it is Caprice in P 
Purple and Gold by James McNeil Whistler. It was painted in 1864. It is an asymmetrically balanced composition in that the sitter is being, has been placed on the golden mean. To balance this out, this visual weight, uh, the artist has placed objects to the right of her. Uh, that is uh, the Japanese prints on the floor, even the one she is holding, the chair, and of course the screen. None of these compete with the, uh, the sitter uh, in visual weight. They basically are in balance. Note the flat um, patterned type shapes throughout the painting. This was usually uh, an influence from the Japanese prints that were making its way across the Western art world of the time. And in doing this, he produced quite a radical painting for its time. Hi, welcome back. I'm trying to keep these videos short, um, just because sometimes they can be just too long. Um, next month though, I'm planning to talk about um, asymmetrical balance, where you place your subject on the golden mean. So how to actually find that golden mean and how to use it when creating an asymmetrical composition. I also want to talk about curvilinear line. That is one of the elements of design. Uh, not only drawing the line and using the line, but also creating an invisible line that's made through connecting two points or two elements. Okay, so until next week, I'll see you. And don't forget to subscribe. And that way I can uh, answer any questions or queries you may have. Bye.